a lot of people I've seen, or should I say a repeated pattern of the data from around the world around me, is that people uh, with mercury toxicity can be very focal, borderline OCD, and can have digestive issues or liver issues. Brain fog is a massive one for them, or nerve issues, energy production issues, hydration issues. I mean, there's a whole list of things. You just have to walk around the corner and see all the people standing out in the road drinking and smoking at the pub. They're the like-minded social circle that aren't into health. We need to have our tribe, and I don't necessarily like that word tribe, but we do need to have great people around us. To live in solitude um, would be very boring on a very pretty planet. And I think to have those relationships as well for absolutely critical for me. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. Welcome to the Body, Mind, Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Seamland, and our guest today is Tim Gray. Tim is an entrepreneur, speaker, and biohacker based in London. He founded the Health Optimization Summit to bring together the different industries and brightest minds in healthy living, fitness, and biohacking. Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. Yeah, it's, I'm glad to have you on the show and uh, we're good friends. So it's good to catch up and to see what you've been up to. <laughs> yeah, thank you, mate. Yeah, well, last we met at the, um, I think it was in the Bulletproof Conference in LA. So uh, what, were you, what, mm. what have you been up to like since that time? Um, I've been traveling around the States a fair bit, meeting friends and speakers and just having some, getting some natural sunlight in because we've, I have a shortage of it here in London. So yeah, it's been it's been an interesting journey. I think I've been in the States more than I've been out of it um, this year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it must be quite uh, difficult to get a deal with the jet lag, or how is it? No, uh, that's the beauty of being a biohacker. You get to learn to optimize these things. So oh yeah, I'm happy to talk about <laughs> that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, if, if your if your mitochondria are running properly, then uh, you can deal with a lot of these things. Mm, definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah. Uh, can you like uh, give us a brief uh, backstory as well of how did you get into biohacking and uh, how did you end up with uh, creating the Health Optimization Summit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give a real quick skip through history because um, I don't want this to be about me. I want it to For be sure. about valuable takeaways that people are going to have from today. But um, essentially, I was a 200 mile an hour business guy into in, in business. Um, I got ill about eight years ago, something like that. And the doctors couldn't help me. I was just getting more and more infections and getting iller and iller and iller. And it was a spiral out of control, really. Um, and it got to the point where I'd been on antibiotics for like three months and I was having issues that you shouldn't have, a, you know, as a 32-year-old. Um, and then one day the doctor shrugged his shoulders and said, Tim, I don't know what to tell you. So that's when I came home and I started researching on my laptop and I had my head down for two or three years researching all of these things and all the things I uncovered along the way. I then realized that, you know, um, that optimizing my health was more important than having a, a, a super career and, and whatnot, which I always thought was the ultimate goal in life. Um, and that life is much bigger than that. And it's about relationships. It's about health. It's about sharing. And while, you know, optimizing your health can be a self-focused thing, self-motivation is the biggest motivation. The, the key thing is what you do with it afterwards and sharing it to the world. Um, after hearing about Bulletproof Coffee, after a few years of being in that, you know, in the research mode, I realized that there was something called biohacking. Um, so I started listening to obviously the Bulletproof Radio podcast, learning a few bits and pieces, and I realized there's a whole community out there like me. Um, I ended up getting to know that community quite well and going to the, the Pasadena Bulletproof Conference 2017, and then started a meetup group, um, just expecting five to 10 friends in London, you know, similar mindset, and says people that drink and smoke, you know, just having a solid group of friends, and that grew to 400 people quite quickly. But mm. the thing I kept on coming up against was people were saying that uh, by a hacker, they didn't understand the word necessarily. And it's quite a, I mean, it's a strong term if mm. you know what it means. Right. And it means a lot of important things. Um, but for outsiders, you need to explain it. And so it, uh, when I was told my mum once I'd built this group of 400 people in biohacking, she asked me what biohacking was. And when I explained it and spoke to several other people, I realized that the goal was health optimization for me, mm-hmm. not transhumanism or implants and things like that. Right. And so I relabeled it and that's when it grew. And it's now at around about a thousand people in the group um, of which over 120 turn up every month on no. a Sunday morning. Yeah. Which, so we're apparently with the biggest group of biohackers that meet on a regular basis um, mm-hmm. on a monthly basis, rather um, even bigger than some of the main, the main places. So natural progression was from speaking to loads of cool speakers just through having friends, not through any, you know, goal. 
um, I decided I wanted to work on a summit. Got to know the summit guys from around the world and then decided to partner with Bulletproof Upgrade Labs and Paleo FX to bring the Health Optimization Summit to London. Mm. Yeah, it's a, quite an interesting story. And uh, mm. uh, I, I, I've also like, um, spoken at your uh, meetup uh, once mm. and it was like truly yeah, like a, lot of, a lot of people showed up, like over 100 people on a, like, a Saturday, <laughs> Saturday uh, afternoon in London, which is quite interesting. Mm. And it comes to show mm. that, yeah, you've done a good job in like building a community and uh, trying to bring, bring them together. Like what, what do you think, what do you think is maybe this, you know, reason why people uh, gravitate towards uh, your uh, group or meetup? You know, what, what is the reason that they kind of come out? Because when I built it, I built it with a genuine intention of creating a like-minded social circle. Mm. It wasn't about selling to people. It wasn't about anything else. It was about a like-minded social circle of people with shared interests in optimizing their health. And um, I think, you know, if you just have to walk around the corner and see all the people standing out in the road drinking and smoking at the pub, they're the like-minded social circle that aren't into health, you know, and mm. they gravitate. There's people everywhere. Mm. And the thing is, it's like we need, we need to have our tribe. And I don't necessarily like that word tribe, but we do need to have great people around us. To live in solitude um, would be very boring on a very pretty planet. And I think to have mm. those relationships as well for absolutely critical for me, um, not for my own validation, but for understanding that this is one life that we have and it's an important journey to build that community. So I labeled it. The, the logo was Biohacker London building a like-minded social circle and people gravitated to that um, through a genuine place. Um, and that's why I think it's done well. And then just being very honest in my language, um, being very open and trying to include people the best I can. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's so true that uh, people uh, as like social animals, they just naturally want to be a part of a certain group. And uh, mm -hmm. like the reason like the mainstream culture isn't you know optimized for health or uh, they don't include biohacking that much is because it's somewhat not that common it's not popular enough for like uh, the majority of people to uh, start mm. picking it up so yeah. uh, you know if, if if we were to live in uh, like a different dimension where mm -hmm. where biohacking would be like the coolest thing to do then uh, mm. e everyone around us would be naturally wanting to do or they would naturally want to take care of their health. And just the problem is that the mainstream culture is somewhat uh, too far away from that. It's changing though, Sim. It's changing. Yeah. I mean, biohacking is in the press more and more and more. For sure. Um, you can see the trend of it picking up, just like the ketogenic diet, for instance, was you know very small a few years ago. And then people realize actually it's not just a diet, it's bigger than that. It's about health. It's yeah. about really optimizing yourself. And like, you know, people such as yourself spreading awareness around these things is is amazing. And the same with what the biohacker summit guys do over in, in Helsinki. You know, yeah. they're really they're they're in their niche, strong niche of biohacking and and, um, they're showing how solid it is and I appreciate that mm -hmm. um, but the point is it's about bringing more awareness to people so they can understand what biohacker is and I feel like the label of health optimization really says to people actually you can optimize your health there is lots of information out there and it's about being brought that to the awareness and then obviously that's not just for biohacker it's for things like ketogenic diet or the paleo mindset or you know, actually how important fitness and movement is to your health or, or obviously the different supplements or testing to make sure that you know what supplements you need and everything in between is about awareness now. So I think that biohacker term is growing massively. And I think the more that people talk about it actually being a health optimization thing, the bigger that the term biohacker will grow. So it's a cause and effect and a symbiotic thing, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I do agree. Like, like me personally, I do like the term biohacking, <laughs> but I think like the, may, the average person may kind of become more fearful about it. And maybe like the health optimization thing would kind of gateway drug the person into understanding yeah. What, yeah. What, that it goes deeper. Yeah, yeah, completely. And I, I think that the, the press is picking up on it a lot and it's talking more and more and more. But I think that the medical community is listening to biohacking um very much so now because it's quantified a lot of it is quantified there's a lot of cases where people th chuck pills down their throat and just hope that they'll be better as a result of this magic bullet and i've been there i'm not going to deny it but the point is is when you get more and more advanced than this from further down the rabbit hole you actually where you can look at specifically what you need on the cellular level to supplement and then it goes from having 30 or 40 pills to having three or four pills depending on what you need and so 
So I think that's where a, a, a difference is. And I think the, why I say about the medical world is because they are noticing things like the ketogenic diet with Dom D'Agostino's work, for instance. It, it cannot be knocked. I mean, it is backed in science and it's saying it optimizes health, which is why ketogenics picked up so much. And it's the same with biohacking. I think it's not far behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, you did mention that you uh, overcame your health issues and uh, kind of biohacked yourself. So maybe like, can you give like a few examples of um, what were mm. some of the issues and uh, what did you do to improve it? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still working on the odd health issue and we all have some things going on depending. Um, but I mean, I started with kidney stones, which I was forming kidney stones at a massive rate which is actually quite scary. And that was very stressful for my adrenals, I think, because that really was the beginning of a cascade. Mm -hmm. uh, kidney stones, um, which I was just told, once you form them, you form them, that's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I found out that it was about oxalate production, endogenous pr oxalate production, mm -hmm. and fixing the gut, um, which was a big part of the protocol. And obviously going on the antibiotics to help with the kidney infections and urinary tract infections obviously made the gut even worse. So figuring out that you need to cut the loop and, and stop running in the hamster wheel and actually figuring out how to optimize the gut was a big part for me. Right. Another part was um, I had seven amalgam fillings in my mouth. Right. Um, and while they, you know, they say that you, amalgam is safe in the mouth, they won't put them in someone that's pregnant because it could be damage damaging to the baby mm. um also in places like germany they actually talk about that i think they've actually removed amalgam from everyone's mouths well for me i had thrush around the filling in my mouth um and when i researched thrush and metal fillings it came up with amalgam illness which is mercury toxicity and i've tested mm. in many many ways and i had very very high levels so understanding the mercury collation process how to get it out of my cells and uh, out of me and then replacing what nutrient deficiencies i had as a result of having that in me um, has been a key part of the journey and then all the other bits and pieces such as immune support or energy production and working on um my mitochondrial health which is low energy production um around meta methylation so mthfr gene variation optimization which is a mouthful um and also the testing the ketogenic diet which is a big one for me i had very high levels of uh, arabinose and what some people call candida and different t types of yeasts right. uh, from so many antibiotics and then i tried everything all the different things and herbs to kill off this yeast levels and all the uh, antifungals nothing worked and when i went on the ketogenic diet i did an um, organic acids test beforehand i started the ketogenic diet nine months solidly testing myself religiously um, uh, for my uh, ketone levels and then nine months later tested again for the organic acids test with tests through the process and it nailed it and they didn't come back as well. So, I mean, I, I think for me, you know, you can try and kill off all of these things that are going in in your body, or you can actually try, try a very clean route, which actually works. So that was another one of those things as well. Mm, well, well yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's quite fascinating that um, the mercury fillings are, uh, you know, they're so common and uh, most people have them. Uh, but actually, you know, there there is a solid science showing that they're going to be really harmful for your health, and uh, even mm -hmm. even like without you even knowing it. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I'd I'd love to touch on this right now, actually, because there's a few things that I've learned in the last month or so that I think since I last saw you, and I think we may have touched on it briefly at the upgrade conference. But um, so mercury being a big part of my journey, and I think it's a very misunderstood or not there's not a lot of awareness around it, is that mercury when it's in your mouth is constantly lining your gut with mercury. Now mercury is used in certain um, injections because it's a natural antibiotic. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's constantly killing off certain gut bacteria the whole time it's in your mouth. It's literally topping wow. up your gut the whole time. So it's <laughs> almost li almost lining your gut, in my opinion, with mercury, with metals, which is killing off certain gut bacteria, which means you don't digest your food a certain way because you're not getting the certain nutrients which means that you're going to have deficiencies, which means your body's not going to work right. Mm. And if you think about that with minerals, we can't work without certain minerals. It's just our electrical system doesn't work. Also, mercury um, also stops certain enzymatic reactions, mm -hmm. which enzyme, enzymatic reactions are absolutely critical to life. Like it breaks well, enzymes, and I've been testing proteolytic enzymes recently, break down proteins, um, into their amino acids and there are processes along the way such as peptides in between there 
Um, but really, if you're not getting the amino acids as well, then how is your body going to be building itself if you're not going to get the right amino acids? So there's, a, there's several approaches of you know, several areas of why mercury in the body is so bad for us. Um, and yet we don't necessarily understand it. All I know is that by getting it out and testing it over the last four and energy increase significantly as a result. Mm, yeah yeah it's uh, so i i myself don't have like any mercury feelings or something but uh, mm. what what would you like recommend to someone who has and uh, who mm. maybe experiences some of these symptoms yeah i mean uh, like a lot of people i've seen or should i say a repeated pattern of the data from around the world around me is that people uh, with mercury toxicity can be very focal borderline ocd mm. and can have digestive issues or liver issues brain fog is a massive one for them or nerve issues energy production issues hydration issues i mean there's a whole list of things and i think when researching different <laughs> different things online they seem to list out about 200 things take this supplement and you're going to fix this 200 things i'm not saying that at all but i do think that mercury does shut down a lot of um, a lot of processes i mean to take it back one step is early days of, of figuring out that i had high levels of mercury I did a cause and effect chart of every symptom and everything that I had and put them into a chart. And every time it could be traced back to mercury. Mm. And so I was like, well, actually the top down approach is to fix the mercury, to see the cascade all come into the line, which I, I feel really did happen well. Mm. And I continued that document ever since. So, um, if you've got mercury in your mouth or if you've had a high fish diet, and I mean, not, wild caught fish like you probably do with a spear in the sea near your home <laughs> um, um i mean like if it's farm salmon um or tuna or whatnot it's generally been fed with very very poor fish feed which is caught apparently from the bottom of the baltic sea which is very high in mercury because there's so many small little fish that they put together then they compact it and dry it and feed it to the farmed fish mm -hmm. dr mccola i think you did a podcast with very recently has got a great um, piece of content on his site around that specifically mm. and there's a film around it um, but basically so if you're eating farmed fish you're also getting a different type of mercury to the amalgam um, and so you're topping up your body so I've seen many bodybuilders that are eat tuna by the gallon yeah. and that they're high in mercury levels so mm. the way to test for it so Dr. Christopher Shade from Quicksilver Scientific does a tri test mm. and that checks hair, bloods, urine to see that your, your mercury levels there and it can tell you the different sources of mercury, where it comes from and how to collate it. I like uh, Doctor's Data Hair Mineral Analysis Test, which was recommended by Dr. Andy Cutler. Uh, that tells you how much mercury you're excreting or the heavy metals in your hair. It also tells you how many minerals you're excreting as well, or how many high level minerals that you're not excreting. So you, from that, you can work out whether or not you have mercury toxicity, because if you have say 10 deficiencies in minerals, you shouldn't have 10 deficiencies in minerals. It says that something's mm -hmm. screwing up with your, with your, um, the way that you're processing these things. Mm -hmm. So it says that you've obviously got mercury because mercury makes you hold on to things or not hold on to things. So that's the way of doing it. So a hair mineral analysis test by doctor's data gives you a very good indication. And Andy Cut has got a book called Amalgam Illness that goes into this. I mean, it's an incredible book. It's a, uh, a scientific journal basically um, <laughs> um I, I implore anyone to read that there's a, another book which is a great guide called the mercury diaries um which is a very good guide to this process and he's a danny is a, a good friend of mine now through getting to meet him luckily mm. uh, is, um, there a, is there like a specific protocol that you followed like supplements yeah, or something yeah i do i mean uh, andy cutler talked about the half-life of alpha lipoic acid and the mps an EDTA. Um, so alpha lipoic acid, which is obviously very needed um, part of our diets, actually. For some people, you have you can have 100 milligrams and it will knock you on your ass because it, <laughs> it increases glutathione production, which means that you start collating the mercury. Mm. Um, alpha lipoic acid is a dual bond collator, which is like two hooks on it, I guess, um, compared to some things like sulfurous food, which is a one hook, which is why some people with high levels of mercury feel bad with cru cruciferous vegetables. Mm. Um, so alpha lipoic acid's half-life is actually three hours. So Andy Cutler's protocol is to take alpha lipoic acid in a tiny dose, say five milligrams, 10 milligrams in the right. test, every three hours, round the clock for three days, day, day or night. Um, and 
and people find themselves improved very, very quickly. So Andy Cutler did a whole protocol around that. Dr. Christopher Shade is the newer school, um, Quicksilver Scientific, and he looks at um, basically speeding the liver up by using bitters, having some alpha lipoic acid at the same time, but also catching the mercury that, so by pushing the mercury out of the, the, uh, the liver and then getting it in the digestive tract at the same time. So it's a push catch protocol. I've mm. tested both. Um, I reckon that from three months of quicksilver uh, collation uh, for the gut, especially with bloating and energy, uh, I found that three months of quicksilver versus about 12 to 18 months of Andy Cutler protocol, you, you can get the results in three months. Uh, mm. um, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get commissions <laughs> for it. I just truly believe in it and I've tested it very closely. So yeah, mm. and I've, I've followed this up with hair mineral analysis tests as well. Right, right. Yeah. I would imagine like the quicker approach would be better. <laughs> you're going to suffer a little bit, but you're going to get it over with faster. Yeah, mm, yeah but, definitely. Uh, is there, what about like fasting? Does that help with a detox of mercury? Yeah. yeah. Well, in my opinion, I mean, like if the, if the gut is under a heavy load and the liver is struggling, the more and more food that you're eating is the more that your body is struggling to process the energy. So I think fasting is good around regardless, as, as you know. Mm. Um, and there's so many processes that are involved in fasting, but I do think it's about cleaning up the gut more than fasting. Right. And right. fasting means that you can clean up the gut. It means that you can go in and put things through it that's going to capture the, like if you imagine that it's full up with food and you take a, a supplement to help clear the, the mercury or any toxins in your gut, mm-hmm. it's just going to be diluted with all the crap in there. Okay. Whereas if it's clean and sterile and you're taking something to capture all the mercury in your gut on the way through, then it's going to be much more effective. Mm-hmm. Right? Personally, I like to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like I have a lot of uh, knowledge about detoxification and such, but I would, based on like my understanding of fasting, I would say that fasting can be useful because you're not putting in like the like additional stress on the liver and digestion. But at the same mm-hmm. time, fasting itself wouldn't be like the best thing uh, in terms of the uh, effectiveness in sense you would need to stimulate the liver's detox pathways with mm-hmm. these different compounds like alpha, alpha lipoic acid mm-hmm. and the glutathione and so on. So mm-hmm. fasting is only yeah. like a, one useful thing, but it's not like a kind mm-hmm. of the end all solution. No, I mean, if, if to put fasting to the extreme, it's obviously it becomes catabolic. You end up sure. breaking down and you die. But I think uh, an area within this is a lot of people that do fasting specifically. And there's an area in my opinion, that's, kind of pushed to one side almost is that the hydration and the mineral side of things when you are fasting people say mm-hmm. water fasting yeah water fasting is good but they still get knackered and moody <laughs> why because they they've got no energy because their body is literally struggling using adrenaline to get going because they're so deficient in the minerals and their electrical system doesn't fire so therefore they become knackered and mm-hmm. then they get stressed and therefore they go oh no my water fast or my fasting is horrible i can't do that i can't do that okay well yeah add some yeah, proper yeah. minerals in and I don't mean one or two like a full spectrum mineral yeah. um, and you find that becomes easier and then that supports the whole process of detoxification opposed to just stressing the body to the max and collating on top of that which is just bonkers yeah that's true mm. that's true hydration is really important and uh, that was like that was one of the points of your uh, speech at the biohackers uh, at the bulletproof conference uh, in LA so you talked about like the five fundamentals you should focus on before you go into like the rabbit hole of biohacking or something <laughs> what, 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 what can you like talk about what were the uh, main points of that speech yeah I, yeah so um I mean I this is the problem with the abundance of information out there and and I remember when you and Dr. McCola met actually at the upgrade conference <laughs> and he went and he he's like I think the words were the were something like anyone that's written a book on metabolic autophagy, you know, is, it would be great to do a podcast with or something along those lines. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it was, it was like, and, and I think the point is, is that these things are needed when you're looking for one, two, three, four, five percent improvements in an area. So if you're specifically keto, um, understanding these things to refine, to make it perfect is important. But for me, I think so many people get stuck down the rabbit hole. They mm. need people that are super down the rabbit hole and they need people that are less in the rabbit hole. And I think that's where I sit with these. So number one is sleep optimization. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got your sleep down, there's no point doing anything else. uh, Mm -hmm. Dalai Lama was once quoted on saying sleep is the best meditation form of meditation. Well, Mm -hmm. if you can do a bit of both, uh, get your sleep perfect and then do meditation, like you're going to, you're going to win it. 
Um, so I, I do quite a few different things to optimize my sleep. Um, I have done for many, many years before I could even track it with my aura ring. Um, and actually many of the things are listed in the biohacker handbook, the biohackers handbook. If you, if you, um, if you know of it, you guys. So, um, I do between 15 and 18 things and that doesn't mean I spend ages lining it up every day. Most of the things are in place for bed. Um, I mean, I, obviously if you have an aura ring, you see how, how long it takes for your heart resting heart rate to, if you eat before you go to bed one night and then see how long it is that your resting heart rate to come down and your heart rate variability to go up, you know how long generally your body takes to calm after eating. So you know how long before bed you should stop eating. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. Um, there's the chili pad for body temperature regulation in bed. There's a complete blackout blind because I'm a night owl and I like to be a night owl. So I block out the light in the morning so it doesn't wake me. Um, there's, um, red light rising full light stack. So that's my bed light. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of things that I would do um, to optimize my sleep. Um, and there's so much research out there around sleep optimization, Matthew Walker's book or the biohacker handbook um, to give you further detail, but get that nailed before anything else. Because yeah. if you have a bad night's sleep, how bad do you feel the next day? So therefore yeah. it's immediate. Yeah, I, I, to I totally agree. Like sleep is the kind of most underrated but it's the most the biggest bang for a buck as well. Like your focus is going to improve, your mood is going to improve. Uh, you're going to yeah. improve with weight loss. You'll have like better stress and, and so on. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I would put it on like the number one seat as well. Mm. Well, just to put it to the extreme, go without sleep for three nights in a row. See what happens. Yeah. You know, you go, you go for three or four days without hydration, which is number two. See what happens. You know, mm. it, these things are immediate fixes. And so while it's great to do a lot of these biohacks, if you haven't got these, these things down, then there's no point. There's just right. no point. Yeah. So number two is hydration optimization. Um, and I think this is a, a, a multi-layered thing. And I'll be quick on it, but I think because people's food quality generally isn't as good, and it's not so high in the mineral content, um, it's not necessarily rot rotated crop, and it's got toxins in it, mm -hmm. and then our digestions, our, our digestive system aren't as optimized because we haven't got the gut bacteria because we've had antibiotics before, and because of various enzymatic issues such as mercury, we don't necessarily get the minerals and nutrients from our food as we should. Mm -hmm. So. Sure, you can fix the gut, which you can take, you know, anywhere from three to 12 or 18 months, depending on how unlucky you are. But you can bypass a lot of that by getting the minerals from a proper mineral supplement almost immediately, right. which means you get your electrical system firing immediately. Mm. Um, and that, for me, was a massive win from chronic fatigue um, and brain fog and headaches and all of these things because it bypasses so many things. Sure, you still need to fix the gut. Mm -hmm. And you still need to hydrate, but the water quality these days doesn't have the minerals in it either. So people yeah. are drinking more and more and more and more water. It's all about consume, consume, consume more water. People are carrying around a bottle of water with them everywhere they go. We were meant to be dipping our heads in streams and drinking from the stream from fresh, fresh water going through rocks, which is high in mineral content and having maybe three or four gulps a day and eating mm -hmm. food that are high in minerals. So if you think on an ancestral mindset, we're not doing the right thing. Yeah. But when someone's earning money from it, unfortunately, we're consuming more and more and more. I mean, even doing it now, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. optimizing my hydration. So uh, hydration is number two. Um, I'm a big advocate for um, something like hypertonic uh, or isotonic. Um, my favorite brand is Totem Sport. Quicksilver do it. Uh, Quinton Hydration do as well. Cell Nutrition, there's, there's a few brands out there. Um, hypertonic is twice the concentration of isotonic. Um, isotonic is the same um, concentration as your blood in terms of mineral balance. Mm. So it's a really good top up. And people that are adrenally fatigued, I, I highly recommend it as my number one fix. Mm -hmm. What mm. about uh, like uh, regular salt or uh, something uh, like sea salt or pink Himalayan rock salt? Yeah, yeah, it's good. They're good as well. I mean, that's really going to help massively very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like soul solution is when you have a, like a glass jar and you put a, a layer of salt in the bottom of it and then let it soak up um, into the water. So it gets to saturation point and then use a plastic tea, a tablespoon every day of that. People find massive digestive health benefits from it. They find that their energy production picks up because they're remineralized. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to 70, I think there was a quote I heard that we're 30% dehydrated in terms of minerals from the inside out. 
which mm. is why our skin becomes dry and horrible because we're just drinking so much water and flushing out more and more minerals opposed to having minerals go in yeah. and, and topping us up. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what about number three? Number three is oral and dental optimization. So again, that ties in with the mercury side of things. Um, if you've got mercury in, have it taken out safely. Uh, so a holistic dentist generally does that. And also if you have any root canal filling or any extractions, they might have a cavitation. Mm-hmm. So if you have a cavitation, it's worth having it looked at and cleaned out properly. There was a documentary root cause recently, which went into a lot of this. It's recently been taken down from Netflix. I'm not mm-hmm. quite sure why, um, but uh, I think it's because it's controversial. But I believe that for me personally, my brain switched back online within hours of having my a, a jaw issue. Mm. from a cavitation so yeah so yeah. dental and oral optimization number four is obviously um light sunlight and grounding optimization so being out in the sun grounding with the earth um, getting the positive photons from the sun and the negative electrons from the earth and being a bio human circuit board between the two which obviously you know f- like supercharges our water makes it become fourth phase or easy water which then f- helps fuel our mitochondria for more energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a really important thing. And uh, obviously uh, in, the, in the hot weather, we need less food uh, when we have a lot more sun. Well, why? Because we're, we're getting antioxidants from the sun and from grounding at the same time, opposed to just relying on food. And this is based on Dr. Jack Cruz's work, um, who I, I really recommend looking into that. But mm-hmm. also sunlight, making sure that we see sunrise for the, the blue light to wake our brain up and reset our circadian rhythm. And then, and then honoring and respecting sunset as the, the natural, like mm-hmm. where the sun is redder and not having blue light like these devices at our face like this while we're in bed at <laughs> 10 o'clock and wondering why we can't sleep. And, you know, I guess respecting the sun and, it's, you know, and, and our circadian rhythms as a result is, is absolutely critical. Um, to health because that ties into number one which is sleep <laughs> yeah for sure um, like yeah. sleep, like the yeah you mentioned like respecting these circadian rhythms that's like also very true respecting like the day and night cycles and everything else of respecting mm. the balance mm. of life mm. in a sense of not mm. being in this very you know hardcore mode all the time which would resemble like wakefulness and sunlight mm. but actually mm. going into like the recovery and restfulness where you know where's Mm. Where, where there is there is no sun there is no fire there is like moonlight and uh, everything is like uh, sleeping yeah yeah that's a imper- well said really well said i mean we should be in a cave with a campfire near the end of it having some natural light mm. not too late at night we should wake up when the sun comes up and yet some of the most successful people i know that work until two or three in the morning that sleep so horrendously because they've got blue light in front of their eyes they don't respect it. and i think respect is the absolute critical word in all of this respect mm. the sun and 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 how how we've evolved to be so yeah yeah that's true so that's why it's number four i mean like there's some quick wins there but it because it ties into number one sleep sleep is the winner yeah for sure <laughs> um, i mean because obviously your body repairs at night what the damage is that you've done through the day from mm. your sleep from all the sunlight and energy you've collected in the day <laughs> yeah um so that's how they tie in together uh, and the last one? one yeah it's oxygen or air and breathing um obviously wim hof is doing very very well in this space and the awareness around it and the results that we're getting is incredible well mm. that's because we're not mindful about how we breathe and obviously for our whole engine to be firing correctly needs a certain amount of oxygen and most of us aren't mindful of that and we don't again respect it enough so wim hof breathing exercises people are doing it daily and they're finding health benefits from it but it's probably because they're starved of oxygen so therefore their mitochondria aren't firing correctly which means they're not healing correctly in my mm-hmm. opinion mm-hmm. um i think um there are alternative ways around it such as hyperbaric oxygen therapy which i'm known for being a big advocate of Mm-hmm. I love I love it very much. Um, I mean, I can meditate for an hour in the chamber and have ninety seven point seven percent oxygen, like mm. administered at double the atmospheric pressure, which means it floods my cells with oxygen, which means I heal from the inside out without having to do lots of Wim Hof breathing exercises mm. every day. But mm. really, we should be in outside of a city that isn't smoky, with mm. clean air, um, breathing properly, with good postures, doing running after a an animal to kill it once a week um doing high intensity training yeah. you know um and then jumping in a cold lake because there's no warm showers 
yeah. to wash, which is the cold thermogenesis. Again, it's mimicking a natural environment in an unnatural world is everything biohacking or health optimization is pointing towards. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it more and more and more. Every single thing that we are doing is mimicking a natural environment in an unnatural world. Yeah. Whether it yeah. Be yeah, it's, it's almost like uh, mandatory or it's needed to survive in that uh, modern world, <laughs> in a sense. That's why like biohacking is you know, like almost like a mandatory thing and necessary for uh, you know, being healthy as a, as, a modern, uh, as a modern person in this uh, urban mm. environment. Mm. Well, it should, be, it should just be health. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, we've gone, we've gone, we've gone um, sickness, biohacking, health optimization, health. Mm. And we're understanding that, you know, like, sure, 5G and things like this is great for our phones and it's great for our day-to-day -day lives, but then we moan that we're ill. You know, uh, uh, all these technologies are incredible, like us speaking right now on, on computer from one country to another and doing a podcast that thousands of people will be listening to as a result is incredible, mm. absolutely incredible. But we have to understand how to reverse the issues that are brought as a result. And yeah. we're just starting to learn these things. Biohacking is perfect biohacking in the workspace which i think is something that's becoming more and more predominant now um with the biohacker summit guys mm -hmm. especially is like because we're starting to understand the importance of this and it's rolling out um you know so it it's bigger than any one of us individually and i think that by understanding these and infiltrating the world with these biohacks without labeling them as biohacks it becomes health mm -hmm. and then we're all mindful of it so yeah that's where it's going yeah, yeah. Uh, but what about uh, nutrition? You didn't uh, include uh, nutrition into that list. So, um, mm -hmm. well, like most people would uh, maybe like start off from nutrition actually instead of like uh, oxygen or hydration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, while um, nutrition is really important and it is in the top ten, but it's not an immediate thing. I'm I'm looking at things that are immediate for quick wins. To if you've got health issues what do you turn what do you do to get it right to get your health back as quickly as possible and again it's it's the self motivation it comes from my journey um but there is obviously methylation or mthfr gene variation optimization which is also in the top 10 and liver support um and uh, food and um what not and so there, there are 10 things that i could mm. list out but okay. realistically i mean everyone is starting to realize the importance of the food that we're putting in our body and the sugar, like the whole sugar thing that everyone is starting to realize, which is why stevia and xylitol and every other type is coming out. I don't really need to chirp on about that because lots of people are talking about how to optimize your diet. I mean, mm. for instance, yourself as well, you're doing very, very well in that space. And I think like, it's, it's putting the awareness out there. I don't need to continue to do that because mm. I feel like a lot of people are becoming more cognizant of what they're putting in their bodies, mm. but they're forgetting about those fundamental five things because mm. they've kind of been under the radar because everyone's been focusing on the other areas, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but we all have our own bias, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a good point. And uh, I, I, I like, yeah, but like probably nutrition would be already like, uh, it's, like people would uh, take it uh, for granted already in in some sense so they mm. they wouldn't mm. they wouldn't even start to pay attention to um, the thing that you mentioned and they may mm. like work on their nutrition for so long they think they're you know dieting wrong they're eating too much or they're like exercising too little or such uh, but the truth is that their the problems their health problems are like caused by those things that you mm. covered in a sense mm. Well, I mean, in Matt Maruka from, um, you know, Matt Maruka, he mm -hmm. was actually the same. He was chasing the paleo diet, this diet, that diet, all these different supplements, and he wasn't getting healthier. And then he heard about sunlight and healing and, uh, and Jack Cruz's work. And all of a sudden, his health starts picking up significantly. I mean, everyone needs something different. Everyone does. We're all different. Um, but, um, you know, it's not just all about diet. It's just not. And I think that getting these things right would, will really set you up and then focus on your diet along the way. I mean, it's not something, you know, cut out the sugar, sure. have a high fat diet, low carb, more natural, more paleo, more ancestral style, mm -hmm. um, fasting mimic, mimic what it would be like as if you lived in a cave, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and you know, like for instance, him like chasing after a, chasing after an animal and killing it, leaving it to rot a little bit for a few days in the cave <laughs> while you got through it would give you natural bacteria for your gut sure. you wouldn't need to buy fermented cabbage you know and, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know the the natural sunlight the fasting all these things um yeah. eating a few berries or a few bits of corn but not a whole loaf made up of thousands of bits of corn you know it's ancestral living is what it comes back to not that i want to chirp on about that because that's not my thing 
right, right, right. What, but uh, what do you eat at the moment? Um, at the moment, today I'm fasting completely because I'm <laughs> I'm um, testing proteolytic enzymes to the max right now, um, which are which is a really interesting journey. And I implore anyone to look into proteolytic enzymes, uh, systemic for breaking down bacteria and viruses and um, and helping your body to heal. I used to eat probably 80%, 60 to 80% meat with a few little vegetables, a bit of salad on the side. Um, but um, I've recently cut it down to be about 20% meat mm. and um, tried to eat as many vegetables as I can, green vegetables. Um, I obviously like avocado, but I'm cutting that out at the moment because I'm testing a low histamine diet, mm -hmm. which I found to be quite good so far. Um, yeah, it's a very, very random mixed diet. It's always low sugar. It's always low oxalate. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be very low grain. I don't really often eat bread unless I'm in the States and I'm, you know, switching off. I like to live on the 90-10 rule, mm. which is similar to Ben Greenfield, where he goes, you know, I'm strict for 90% of the time, but for 10%, you know, mm. I, I let go. I let my hair down and I enjoy life because it reminds me of a saying, and this isn't an excuse to let my hair down by any means, but someone once said to me, um, about a joke about the doctor and he went the guy went to the doctor and said doctor doctor I want to live forever and he said okay cool do you drink no do you smoke no do you have unprotected sex no do you jump out of planes no well, why do you want to live forever you know <laughs> yeah. 90 10 for me so sure. while I like to I like to mix it up randomly depending on different diets for different nutrients looking at what I need on the cellular level and making sure that I eat for that so it's not about one diet or whatever mm -hmm. but it's generally generally low carb mm -hmm. high fat um and nutrient dense stuff and i mean mm -hmm. we've talked we've talked about this you know one to one um i remember you opening my eyes to eating pork belly because it's so damn nutrient dense and tasty um so yeah <laughs> so it's one of my yeah. things now yeah yeah it's uh, it's it's true that um i i, I think uh, like following someone like a cyclical manner in your diet is really like also important uh, for mm. uh, not only like mimicking the ancestral uh, way of living but also you know, promoting this sort of a diversity in your digestion and mm. uh, like giving your digestive enzymes a break as well, so to say that there are different digestive enzymes for breaking down either proteins, carbs or fats. And mm. you're like hammering all the time for one lever, so to say, you're hammering only the protein and or you're hammering only the carbs, then eventually mm. you're, you're just, you know, just uh, kind of draining your own digestion. And mm. the way mm. you kind of circumvent that is to cycle in, in and out of those different ways of eating. So that's, mm, that's mm, another way of like optimizing your gut as well. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a, is a very good point. And I think with something I, I, I mean, I've been studying proteolytic enzymes heavily, very heavily for the last, you know, month, must be month, six weeks, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding how they break the proteins down into their amino acids is, is absolutely important. And because I heard the other week that the gut bacteria is only responsible for around 20% or the icing on the cake of the digestive process. Mm -hmm. So therefore enzymes and the process of running through the digestive system is massively important. Mm -hmm. So I've been testing one proteolytic enzyme a day, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, now 10 on an empty stomach. My mental clarity has shot up massively. Uh, I know when I look on a cellular level, I'm deficient in certain amino acids that comes down for a certain reason. So I am really, really interested to look after doing this test of the proteolytic enzymes, how the amino acid profile in a cellular level looks for me. So I think, you know, this it is, it is really good for the diet part and for optimizing the gut and clearing out all the old things. And I think to round off on the, the enzymes, and I think it is part of the digestive process, whether or not you're high fat or not. Um, it really does break the things down into what your body needs. And if you haven't got those enzymes coming from your pancreas correctly or coming from your stomach correctly, you're not going to break down all this juicy, lovely meat and vegetables you're eating in the first place, which means mm -hmm. diet is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's an area that should be focused on. I think if there's anyone out there that has got things like um, cysts or um, – issues like that then proteolytic enzymes are known to break them down very quickly because they're breaking down the proteins that surround around bacteria and biofilms and once that breaks that down it's exposed to the immune system to do its job mm -hmm. so i mean it's an area to explore definitely yeah I, I think that was one of also like the key things that uh helped you to you know progress in your keto diet as well when you did it like uh, mm -hmm. helping to break down the fats that you mm -hmm. actually consumed mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think with keto, this is an area that was missed. It's, it's very heavily missed is the uh, ox bile. I like ox bile tablets from Nutricology. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people start on the keto diet and they go, 
wow, I was really high in keto to start with. I was fasting and now I'm, yeah, I was amazing. And then like well, yeah. after a while, you stress your liver and you can't, your liver's not creating the bile that you need for it. So therefore you're not digesting the fats. Therefore your ketone levels aren't going up. Mm. And then you're in low carb limbo. You're in between the two opposed to in one. So by adding in ox bile, you've actually got the right digestive enzymes to break down the fats. Now I think with proteolytic enzymes, they're slightly different to ox bile because they are specific, specific ones. Whereas ox bile is obviously more specifically for fat in my opinion, but it really does work on the ketogenic diet. If you're struggling to get into ketosis, um, mm. I mean, it flushes you, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, for a few days if you add them in because it really does start moving stuff through and it's almost like uh, it's like a conveyor belt. But, right. <laughs> you know, after three, four or five days, um, it really is magic. And there's someone I've uh, helped recently that added them in was like that for nearly a month and I had to make sure that they kept very well hydrated. Mm. After a month of doing the ox bile and their digestive leveling again while being on the ketogenic diet, their hormones suddenly came back into line for the first time mm -hmm. because as you know like the cascade with the hormones and where it comes from um if you're not getting enough fats then that's not going to work properly so the first time she's like i feel like i'm really in a, an amazing place and all i have changed is the ox bile in my diet mm -hmm. i mean it's, wow. it's a significant area and i think that's an area that was missed at the metabolic health summit we went to in january together mm -hmm. um that they don't talk about supporting the liver when mm -hmm. it gets stressed from doing too much high fat low carb yeah, that's true. Yeah, like the, uh, that, that's the, like even with the processed foods, you know, you're not getting the digestive enzymes. So you have to just focus more on like the actual real foods uh, that mm -hmm. come, come like the, together with a package of all the vitamins and nutrients as well as the digestive enzymes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely spot on. Yeah, you're the first person I've heard that said that because of the processed food, that there's not the right enzymes, but you're exactly right. And that's a, a critical area if you don't break it down because you don't have the enzymes in the food, you've got to get it from somewhere. That's yeah. why this is such, such a big win in terms of uh, proteolytic enzymes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to your uh, results with that. Maybe can you talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, Health Optimization Summit, like who are going to mm. be speaking there and uh, what are you yeah, going to plan sure. on doing? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, my mindset is that I want to bring awareness to um, biohacking and health optimization by bringing the smartest minds from the health, fitness, medical, wellness, nutrition, and biohacking spaces into the same place for the first time ever in history. Um, biohacking is very similar to that, but as I say, it's further down the rabbit hole. I want to bring awareness to biohacking mm -hmm. um, under that label. And I think. Um, I've got people such as John Gray, who is the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. He's coming along. Um, he is um, all about gender roles and hormone optimization and relationships and community. So he'll be speaking about that, the importance of that. We have Dave Asprey, uh, founder and uh, founder of Bulletproof Coffee um, mm. and the father of biohacking. <laughs> um, we have um, Luke Story, who is um, a well-known podcaster, the lifestylist, uh, who's going to be the MC for the event. And um, wow, who, uh, people like Aubrey de Grey, who is in longevity. Mm. Um, we're speaking to Ben Pakulski, um for um, body composition. We have Daryl Edwards, who's movement as a medicine, um, mm. and with, with his research behind how the immune system improves through um, high intensity and random movement and um, I guess like primal play, he calls it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, the lineup is massive. I'm going to have a quick look on my screen here because uh, I'll, I'll run through them quick fire for you. Uh, we've got Harry Adelson. Yeah. Who is the full body stem cell guy that looks after Dave Asprey. Uh, we have uh, Gerard Pollock, who is the guy that's um, behind the fourth phase water coming along Christopher mm -hmm. shade from Quicksilver scientific. We've got quantified Bob, uh, who is one of the, the early uh, um, guys within the quantified self movement. And obviously quantifying what we're doing is really important. So he's going to be giving a talk on that. Uh, Dr. Andrew Hill around neurofeedback um, and optimizing the brain. Uh, James Carroll around the science behind red light therapy. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nasha Winters, which is, um, integrated oncology, Dr. Scott Share on metabolomics into cellular health and uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, plus many more, including our one and only Seamland. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's good uh, that you invited me and I'm happy to speak with all these different uh, uh, people. And the lineup is really impressive and you've done a good job of uh, really uh, it's kind of networking and bringing them together. Like uh, we, we've been you know, traveling to these different events together 
and uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen you kind of always <laughs> trying to make the best of uh, inviting them all to London. So uh, you've been uh, successful so far. Mm. Well, I think I think um, I think a piece of this is I've been doing this to enjoy it. Mm. I've been doing it just to build um, build my own house optimize my own health and building friends that's it and then when it came to building a summit they were in place it wasn't that I was building the friendships to do the summit um, regardless of what people may think it looks strategic it really wasn't it was just enjoying the ride mm -hmm. um, so when I've met someone I've been telling them about what I'm up to with passion and, and they've shared the vision which has been incredible so I'm I'm absolutely flattered to have so many amazing people on board such mm -hmm. as yourself Sim I mean it's, it's it's such a fun ride as well it's yeah, such yeah. a fun ride yeah <laughs> it's true yeah so, so that's September and 14th and 15th um, this year uh, 2019 in central London next to the O2 Millennium Dome mm -hmm. um, it's over two days um, I'm just working on getting Wim Hof it's my dream I got the venue especially for Wim Hof to be there with an error outside so I'm hoping I'm hoping we can confirm him um, <laughs> so, yeah. that would be like be a dream come true yeah yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, like let's let's hope uh, Wim Hof sees this <laughs> or uh, someone else uh, tells him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I, I did it. I brought that venue just for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I mean that would be the icing on the cake. I'm flattered to have the people I have on board. They're all incredible. Um, yeah, and so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well uh, it's been good talking with you. Uh, before I ask my last question, like, uh, where can people learn more about you and your work? Uh, so um, follow me at uh, Tim Biohacker. Um, on Instagram, I'm also page um, on Facebook as well. I'm Tim at healthoptimization.com. Optimization with an S, mm -hmm. not a Z, because I'm in Britain. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave all the links to the show notes as well and uh, to the uh, summit so people mm -hmm. can check it out. Uh, my mm -hmm. last question is uh, what's this one piece of advice or a habit you wish you adopted sooner that improved your body and your mind? Wow. I hate to say it, but it's sleep better. Like mm -hmm. literally like respect sleep, get it right. Focus on getting that right. And so many other things follow as a result. Mm -hmm. So many other things. Um, yeah, I wished I'd, I wished I'd respected my sleep as a, as a, in my twenties, um, mm -hmm. and optimize that properly, but we didn't have the data or the technologies to do that other than, Oh yeah, I felt like I slept eight hours, you know, that's what I would do. Um, and also pick up books and podcasts and listen and read and, and, you know, devour the information to become your better self and join in the movement and the community and join your tribe because, you know, this is where it's at. This is where the future is going. Everyone being together and, and trying to make health, health more prominent in our lives opposed to, you know, nasty things that are going around. Yeah, that's true. It's a good message. And uh, I hope uh, that we together achieve it. <laughs> mm, I hope so too, mate. I right. hope so too. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming to the show and uh, I'll see you around. Thanks for having me, Tim. See you soon, mate. See ya. All right, that's it for this episode. Make sure you check out Tim's Health Optimization Summit event and all the links are going to be in the show notes. You can also use my code SEAMLUND to get a discount on their tickets. I'm also going to be speaking at the Health Optimization Summit, so definitely come check it out. It's in London on the 14th and 15th of September. Thanks for listening. My name is Seam. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay empowered.